Well, hello, shiny, crafty people. Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to show you a really fun and easy Christmas craft that you can do with kids and grandkids. They're these beautiful stars made out of fabric. This one's made with Wonder Under. This one's made with regular fabric. I'm going to show you both of these versions today. And the best part is, is other than just cutting some strips of fabric, the rest is just folding and ironing, and you can easily make these to hang as ornaments on a Christmas tree. Now, here's the fun thing. These are, are called by some people Scandinavian stars, and in fact, that's the video that I watched to learn how to do these. I'll link in the description below. Really great video. Uh, you should definitely watch her version as well. My version takes a little bit, few different things. But really, I also found out that these were invented or potentially developed by a man by the name of Friedrich Froebel. Now, I may be saying his last name wrong. He was a German educator who created the concept of the kindergarten, so we're all familiar with his work. But more importantly, in my life, as an expert on the architect Frank Lloyd Wright, I was so surprised to hear that Friedrich Froebel had done these because he also created a education system that Frank Lloyd Wright's mother employed to teach him all about geometry and color theory and concepts in the world, and he continued to use that through all of his architecture. So it's crazy that architecture by my favorite architect, Frank Lloyd Wright, like this gorgeous house, falling water, was all uh, inspired by the work of a German educator who also happened to create this fun idea for a easy star that you can fold out of paper and fabric. So join me down at the cutting table and I'll show you how we get started on this project. So to make my version of these stars, we're going to need some fabric. I've actually bought a, uh, a, a collection of fabric from Amazon and I'll put the link down in the description below. And this has a, a 12 really fantastic fabrics all in different uh, designs that coordinate for Christmas. So these are fat quarters. Um, I'm also going to need some uh, heavy-duty interfacing. This one's called Wonder Under by Pellon. I love this stuff. Super easy. Also put a link in the description below. And of course, some kind of a um, grid to cut with and my rotary cutter. You could also mark this with pencil or, uh, or ink, you know, a pen, and then cut it with a pair of scissors. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the sizes we need uh, with the material here, and then do the um, this Wonder Under underneath it. This Wonder Under is uh, 15 inches by three yards. So that 15 inches by three yards is gonna get us quite a number of stars. I'm gonna use the 15 inch measurement and then uh, one inch strips. Now that Wonder Under comes with instructions, and it's important that we read the instructions and make sure we understand how this is going to be used. We're gonna place the rough side of the Wonder Under against the wrong side of the fabric, pressing for five to eight seconds with hot, dry iron and letting it cool. And then if we wanna fuse it to another piece of fabric, we will gently peel off the paper backing and place that fusible side down now to the other. We're gonna be using our iron at a wool setting, pressing firmly for 10 to 15 seconds. And so uh, it's important, they say, to use a steam iron with a metal sole plate. Handheld steamers will not permanently bond interface to fabric. And using a damp press cloth as a temperature and timing guide is quite possible. Um, it, it helps, so if you, if you need to do this, you can use a damp press cloth and after 10 to 15 seconds, your press cloth should be almost dry and that'll help you realize that your iron is at the right temperature. You can also pre-test this with swatches of fabric, but I say check out the instructions on whatever double-sided fusible interfacing you're using. I just happen to be using Wonder Under by Pellon. Get a good iron on those, press on those. I should say I'm gonna press them, not iron them. Press them nice and flat. And I've cut a uh, about a 15, uh, a 15 inch wide, because that's how wide the Wonder Under was, by five or a little more inch wide piece so I can get four one inch strips out of it. And uh, so that's one of them. Then I'll come in and put the other one just right on top of it. Um, and I'm gonna try to make sure that I do this in such a way that I can use the rest of the fat quarter for other things. Now it's set a cool dry iron and this iron has lots of steam going on right now. So I'm gonna turn the steam off and make sure it goes nice and flat. I don't think it's really gonna matter which way do these stripes go uh, for my finished piece. So now what we'll do is we'll bring that piece of Wonder Under in and I'll go ahead and get it set up here. 
And I like by doing a five inch piece, it's about the size of the iron itself, so I can come in and put the pressure down there and then move it. And again, I can always read the instructions and say press for five to eight seconds with a hot, dry iron. So I'm doing that as I go along, five to eight seconds. Sort of overlapping in a few areas. Oh, now my irons tell me you've been straight down too long. Now you'll notice there was some discoloration on my iron for some reason. This iron, I think, has done a few other projects. You know, it's not so pretty on the back side. I don't quite know what my staff's been doing with it, but uh, hopefully that wasn't for me. All right, I feel like that is done, and now it's super hot. I'm gonna let it cool, and then we'll come back and I'll show you what we do next. All right, I had to wait about three or four minutes to, for this to cool, but through the magic of the internet, it's cooler for you right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this top layer of fabric, and I'll cut right next to this uh, piece, because I wanna be able to find out where the wonder under is later so when I go to cut this into strips, and rather than trying to figure it out. So I'm gonna cut that off of that piece, remove this out of the way, and we are now back to our other and I can line it up pretty close to the edge down there, because that's gonna work out well. I get an idea how big this is gonna be. I can come in and follow the instructions. Uh, number two on the instructions here is to fuse, which is to gently peel off the paper backing. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna just get an edge here and gently peel off this paper backing. And you might notice, depending on how, you, can, you kinda can see that it's leaving a shiny, piece there and that's our fusible interfacing. So now I can flip it over. Now because it's gonna have to pierce through the fabric, uh, I'm gonna actually be put longer, my uh, iron on it longer. I will also point out to you that um, I'm not going over the edge here. I don't wanna do that because I don't want any of that glue sticking to my nice ironing surface. So I'm gonna be real careful to make sure, which is why I, um, which is why I sort of cut a little bit bigger around it. I don't want it to go and stick to my surface. So I'm gonna go back and it says 10 to 15 seconds per sort of area. One of the things because of the shape of the iron, I'm gonna spin this. Sounds a little weird, but I'm going to now spin and go this way and overlap. And then as I do that, I'll work my way down and then I'll let it cool a little bit and come back and do it again. I think it's gonna be valuable to really making sure it holds this down. And I can kind of tell where uh, I overlapped here, so I know to hit the next one so they all continue to stay. Now this is a little more extra work than doing the flip and fold, but I think if you have uh, fabrics that you don't want to, um, you want to be sparing with, this is a great way to make it last on fabrics that might uh, you might not have a lot of and you want to be careful with. But I also just think this makes a thinner, skinnier, more interesting paper-like uh, uh, star, and I think that's a little bit of fun. Of course, I'm still gonna show you the other version. All right, and now those two things are put together and I can see I, can, I cannot pull them apart. Um, and I can feel in here where the wonder under is, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim the rest of that off of there. And I'm gonna be able to save this piece to be used in the future on another project, but I have my finished piece here that I can begin to cut apart into strips. So let's go back over to our cutting table and cut this into strips. All right, so cutting this into strips, I'm just gonna feel along and I wanna get a four inch strip out of it, four by 13 and a half. So I'll come in and just go ahead and cut a straight line up one edge. I know I've got more than four inches wide. So that makes sure I have wonder under now all along the edge here. I'm also going to measure across and make sure I get to 13 inches. And so I can e easily use my ruler for that. I'm gonna use that line I just created, the straight edge at the top, so I've lined it up across the top. And then I'm just gonna come along the side and feel until I feel the wonder under starting, which is right about there. And then I can now chop that off. 
All right. Then I can spin it around, put my mark at 13 and a half on this side and make sure that all my lines line up. So I'll, I'll use the ruler lines to line up. All right. And the last thing I'm gonna do is cut one inch strips out of it here. So you can do a couple of different things. I'm going to line it up at, along this edge, and that's at six inches. Make sure I've got wonder under in, I can feel it, but I've got it in all the sides there. And I'll line it up at the six inch mark and chop. And then all I have to do is lift the ruler and go to five inches, put the five inch mark along the edge here. And now I get a one inch strip rather than having to um, try to cut one inch, then one inch, then one inch. And all I, I can keep the majority of the fabric under the ruler where it's nice and safe and it's not gonna shift. If I try to do it this way, I've got to really hold my fingers down to get, keep the fabric. I'd rather do it this way. So then I come to the four inch mark. I guess I had had it at five before. I should have told you that I had it at five and now I'm going to four. And I'm doing this, I get an extra strip out of it. And it's kind of fun to see how the strips sort of change a little bit with the particular fabric. Now this fabric might not have had a small enough detail, so it might not be exactly as uh, detailed. I might have wanted to pick some a fabric that had a little smaller detail, but on the back, of course, we get those cute strips. So, And then I'll do again. And then the last one will be the one that I will have to be very careful because I don't want it to move. I do have some grippy um, dots under my ruler that hold it in place, but I'm just going to be super careful. And you could draw all this in with a pen if you chose to, but look how great this is going to look. You know, when I put them together, I'll get some different varieties. And I might pick which ones do I want to use. Do I want that big green stripe? Will I rather have the two that have some? I kind of think I really want it to be these four that have a little more detail in them. So I'll probably use those for, for my pieces. All right, let's get ready to put these together. So this uses four strips of fabric that are four inches, uh, and I'm gonna cut them to 13 and a half, but here's four of them. And what we need to do is fold these in half and then each of the edges in. So what I'll do is I'll take my iron and I will fold these in half, give them a good press with my iron to make sure that's held in place, and then I'll fold the edges in. So I get a nice, do it in half, Give it a good press. That just gives us a line to know where to fold to. And then I'm gonna fold each of the edges in to that crease. So we go here, this edge folds into it. Now what this tends to do is make it a rather bulky star, which actually looks kind of nice though. So I don't think it's bad. Um, it's just the more traditional way. And I wanted to show you that way with the wonder under. And again, we'll fold the other end in kind of fun it almost lines up to itself uh, that's not planned by the way that just happened to happen to be the way it goes so now I've got the two edges in and I'm gonna then fold it all completely in half to make our one inch fabric strip all right I'm gonna do that again on the others and then I will show you what to do after that All right, so all four of those are done now. We've got four of them. We can kind of pick which side we like. I kind of like those sides of these. I don't think I really want to put the red in there, so it'll confuse things. So what I'm going to do is now uh, cut these to about the bright size, 13 and a half, and then I will uh, start flipping and folding. So I've made those four pieces, and I'm gonna go ahead and fold these um, in such a way that uh, as we do them, I'm going to fold them sort of the the wrong side uh, out, which will 
kind of makes sense. I want the side I don't want to see to be facing up. And I'm going to fold them with about an inch or so left over at the top. These don't really matter which side is the wrong side because um, they're the same fabric all the way across. It's the on it's only the others, these um, the ones with the stripes that seem to have a sort of a wrong side that I want to do. So, um, And I'm going to also put the folds all on the same side of all of these as I do this part. Uh, just to make sure I'm getting consistency. So those are all now folded that way. Last one I drop in here. And then just to give myself a little bit of, make it more crisp, I will go ahead and give these a little bit of a press to get those folds in there the way I want. All right, now the best way to do these is to put, to flip around the two that look like each other and flip them around so that the the extra material is up, and I'm going to flip them over so that the longer part is on top. And I'll do the same thing with these. I'll flip them so that they're facing each other this way with the longer piece on top. See the longer piece is on top. All right, what we need to do is I need to uh, put these together so that the, let me make sure I have this done exactly right. Oh yeah, I think I have to flip these the opposite direction. So I need these to go this way and this way. And that's because I'm gonna make sure that these will lock in together when I put them all in the right uh, situation. So let me take a couple off. Let me take these off for right now, spread them out of the way. I'm gonna open this up and lay this in here. So now it folds over, great. So I have this material going over this one. So now I want to put this one on, but because this red is underneath, this red needs to go above. So it's easy to do that. We just slide it through. Wow, that looks great. So now they're interlocking with one another. Okay, so we have those interlocking. And then we need to, well, this one's going underneath the red, so this one has to go over it. So I open up the material place the red through. Ah, perfect. Except now this one is going over top of this red, but there's already one of these striped ones going over top of the red. So this one has to go through the red. So I'll take the fabric, open up the red, and slip both pieces of that fabric through. Now it's just a matter of tightening all of these pieces up so that they interlock with one another. And it's actually pretty easy to do. I'll tighten the two red ones. It's nice that I had ironed in those pieces that I wanted because those uh, those um, edges where they folded because now it really locks in easily. I can pull them and still see where they're supposed to go and make sure I keep my one inch or so available all around the edges. So now I have those four pieces all piled on top of each other. Ah, looks so good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the long piece here and fold it down. Fold that down. So now I have that one folded and I've crossed over this striped one. So then I'll trap that because remember now it's going over two stripes. It's going under the, over the stripe there and the stripe here. So this stripe has to go over top of it. Okay, that's easy. Now we've got that except now this stripe is going over two red. So if I flip this red over, now I have the red covering. Oh, but except now I need to trap this stripe. So this stripe will go over, but I don't have another red to go over it. So I tuck it through this one. So I'll pull this one back a little bit to give myself some room. And then I can tuck this green stripe through it and underneath. And as I tighten that, I can then tighten this red one. And now we're really, we're really working here. Look how good this is going. Oh, so good. We got that great contrast going on. Now it's time to make our star points. And on that one we had done, this is where those star points are gonna come in. So there's two ways to do this. I'm gonna show you both of these ways. The first one is more difficult, which is you fold underneath to that point. And no, yeah, underneath. And then you fold back over like this. And I'm gonna give it a little steam, a little bit of an iron. 
and then you fold back over itself again here. Give that a little bit of press. And then you're gonna tuck all of this fabric inside this piece. And to do that, I'm gonna get some tweezers. I think they're really gonna help. So actually what I found was a nice pair of forceps that I'm gonna use. And I'm going to put underneath here and just get a hold of that fabric and be able to pull it in underneath. Oh, looks so good. And now that's tucked it in beautifully. Don't be afraid to use a little steam and your iron to press that into place. All right, we've done that one and we can spin around and do the next one. I said I was gonna show you two ways, but actually that's probably the best way to do them, so I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna fold it out. And then in and back. And when I do that, I need to make sure that I give it a nice amount of press with the steam iron. So again, now when you do this with paper, it folds like origami and you're not too worried about it. But when you're doing it this way, a little less easy to do. Just tease all that fabric in underneath, flatten it out if you need to. Look at that. And then we just keep spinning. We go around and do the same thing over and over. Now you'll notice that I'm only doing the shortest ones so far. I haven't tackled those super long ones. And that's because we have to do those from the other side. Those have to be handled from the other side of the star. And again, make sure you press your fabric in so it's nice and flat across there. And it's laid out. I've gotten a few strings there. And one last one, and it's gonna sort of look a little interesting because you're gonna have these tails going on all four sides as this happens. That's okay, that's kind of what you need to have happen. Now these are all tucking in easily because the tail is not too long. We're gonna find on the other side that we actually have to trim our fabric a little bit to get it to fit. You have a couple options. You can trim that earlier if you want, or you can trim that after you do it. So now we've got this part done. We're gonna flip the entire thing over. And see, if we fold this star like this, right? We come here, we fold it over. You're gonna find that that's way too much fabric. So what we can do is we can sort of approximate that and trim right here. All right, that gives us our measurement. Now I wanted you to see something interesting that I did here. Um, remember I only wanted this side to show, but I folded these the other direction. Uh, and I'm getting, or I wanted this side to show without the red. I'm gonna get some red showing on this one. Now I don't think it looks bad, but I think it's because I'm folding these in a specific way. If I were folding them this way, I would still get the red. I wonder what I'm doing differently. Oh, I think I'm supposed to come here, fold this and then back over, but then that would tuck underneath. So that doesn't quite work either. Well, we're gonna just continue the way we've been doing them because I think it's the best plan. So we fold it over, fold it back this way, back on itself, give it a little press, and again, use my forceps here. Now I might trim a little more th fabric off of there because I really don't want it to come out. Now, if you decide that you don't want any of these tails to ever pop out, maybe you're gonna, this will be something that you actually have to wash at some point. Um, you're gonna want to um, glue this in or use some other kind of adhesive um, to really hold it in place. Um, and you would just dab some glue under there and it's not a problem. All right, let's keep going with these. Look at that. I think these are a super fun project to do with kids because there's not a lot of, there's not sewing involved, right? There's just uh, flipping and folding. So you had to cut a little bit of fabric to start the one time, but after that, everything else uh, is pretty easy to do. 
You could have uh, started out with a smaller piece of fabric in case you could probably get start with a 12 and a half inch piece because I'm cutting about an inch and a half off. But it doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room just in case you have any issues. So I'd be careful about that. I don't mind doing a little bit of cutting uh, after the fact. I think it's okay to trim off. Um, and the last one is finally here, the last one. We're ready to go to the last one. Again, fold out underneath, remember when, and you, and you could, here, some people will do this. They fold that way and then they flip it over and fold this back to really make sure it gets nice and, and tight. Iron it there. But then you have to come back and flip it over again and then fold it over. And I feel like you can just get that done the same way by folding it over from this other side. So we have that done again, the last little bit. And put our, oh, I, I missed it with my forceps there. Grab it with the forceps and then you can pull it tight. And there, look at that cute star that got made. Flip the same uh, on either side. And then the fun part is you put a little thread in there or a little ribbon and you've made a really lovely ornament out of just uh, four pieces of fabric. Here's the version done with a little bit different fabrics made with the Wonder Under. They're thinner. You'll see, how notice how much thinner it is than the other one. But I think, wow, uh, both an effective way to put this together. I would have chosen some more contrasting fabric here, maybe a red and just a plain red and a plain green would have looked good. But I like the idea of using these coordinating fabrics and then you can uh, play with how this goes with all those different fabrics. You can make quite a few um, out of them. All right, well, that's, that's it. Those are the stars that I created. Now, I will tell you, as much as I really thought the Wonder Under was going to be a great idea and was going to be this just revolutionary idea of how you could do these, I actually like the traditional fabric one. Uh, it's a little bulkier, but I got to tell you, it's so pretty. It just It's just a really lovely way of doing it. And you know what I think I would do to make some of these fabrics last a little longer, these fabrics that I bought off of Amazon, is I would find a coordinating solid color and then use that as two of the strips and then use these beautiful fabrics as the other strips. You could, in just a very short period of time, especially if you sort of assembly line this, you could make, you know, a, several dozen of these and really decorate a tree up really pretty. And it's so soft and it just feels like old time Christmas. All right, folks, as we get closer to the holidays, I got to tell you, please enjoy making wonderful gifts with for your family and with them. Teach someone how to sew or how to do this kind of craft. This is a real easy one to do with the kids uh, to get them into the idea of having fun crafting and sewing. My grandmother's taught me how to do this when I was a young child, this kind of stuff, and it has stayed with me my entire life, helped me build an entire career and meet awesome people like you on YouTube. So until next time, get those kids involved and stay crafty. Bye for now. Wow. Now I just have to make about three dozen more. Maybe the tree should just be smaller so I don't need to bake so many. <laughs>